Hello, everybody. Welcome to Jean Pong in an Elevator, the podcast where I, Mike's Mike, I just say anything. I say anything. Yes. Uh, special hello to Marcel. Thank you for being a top tier patron, Marcel. I hope that, like, you're mentally preparing for Hold the Girl coming this Friday. That is such a scary thought. It is such a scary thought that that album's going to be coming this Friday because my life will change. Like, that's not a joke. Like, it will change. Um, so I hope you're mentally preparing for that. I personally need to get my head around that more. Like I've got three days to prepare streaming. But my thing is like I love to stream music and keep track of it. So I use this website called Last FM, which tracks all your listening if you link it to your Spotify or Apple Music or whatever. And every time an artist releases a single, right? So Rena did This Hell and then her second single was Catch Me in the Air. And then Catch Me in the Air she released as like a LP, excuse me, LP. So like Catch Me in the Air and then This Hell. So like you'd stream both. And then she did that with the third and fourth singles. I don't know if they were actually like proper singles or promotional singles. But anyway, when the actual album comes out, those streams that I did in those other LPs won't count as album streams. So it'll look like I didn't stream the album. But have I been streaming that album? I've never stopped since that first single came out. Yeah, yeah. Um, so for this as this podcast episode, I'm going to be basically talking about how my hateritis has flared up. I don't know if you guys knew that about me, but I have severe hateritis. And it just like every now and then, you know, sometimes it's linked to the weather. Sometimes it's linked to someone doing some dumb shit. Or sometimes it's just... I feel like a hater, right? So my hateritis is flared up. So has my say anything itis. You probably picked up on that in the last podcast episode because I was really just saying anything, wasn't I? Just I was saying anything and anything. I was anything and anything. Slay. I was like, oh my god, Queen Diamonte Jubilee, and then she died. So I don't know if I had anything to do with that. So I will not speak on people having milestones anymore because um also I mentally am blocked because just before I sat down to record this I was on the bird app and I saw a tweet with pictures of um Megan Fox turning up to Beyonce's birthday party and it was just her getting out of the car and then someone <laughs> tweeted she looks so good when she's not next to that goblin and I was like whoa <laughs> Wow. Um, so I've been thinking about that for the last like half an hour nonstop. So also I'm sitting on my couch, my IKEA, I want to say it's Stockholm couch. This couch, I don't think I would tell people to buy it because yeah, the color slays a little bit. It's like a little bit minty, but it's a bit like deep. Like it's, hard to sit on it normally unless you got really long like long thighs what what's the upper part of your leg called Fib no bitch femur no that's the I don't know I don't know I'm an engineer slash youtuber don't ask me about the body don't ask me about money don't ask me about kitchen skills they're the three things that I just do anything like, I know how to cook, but does it taste good? No. Do I know what it tastes like? No. I haven't been able to taste anything for, what day is it now? 40, two, three, four, five. Day 45, no taste. Oh my God, day 45 on the island. I'm watching Lost right now. It's actually on the TV across from me. It's episode, I think this is episode 10, when Claire's, I think she's about to have the baby. Let me just say, watching Lost... It's fantastic. I've seen it before, but I'm just saying like, it's such a fun show to watch and they like remastered it for Disney Plus. I swear they did because why am I saying pause? You know, why am I saying Jack's pause? Because I know I wasn't seeing pause in 2004 when I was watching when I was nine. Like I wasn't seeing that. 
Also, how iconic was it that my mum let me watch Lost in 2004? Like, it was Lost, Amazing Race, and I think Heroes. They were, like, my three shows. Actually, and America's Next Top Model. I would watch those shows with my mum. And, like, how iconic is that? Um, so, yeah, I'm watching Lost. I also watched Scream recently because I am doing a video on it. Oh, that's a good movie. Yeah, yeah, it is. And it's, like, Pretty Little Liars in like level five version of Pretty Little Liars. If Pretty Little Liars was version one or stage one, original sin was stage two. Then you have a couple of stages and you have Scream. Because like Scream, yeah, it's a horror movie. So you're going to get some deaths. And I'm not really good with gore, um, but I'm good with thrillers and mysteries. And I really enjoyed that aspect of it. Speaking of thrillers and mysteries, there was that new trailer for um, Glass Onion, which is the sequel to Knives Out. It was like Glass Onion, a Knives Out film. And kudos to them for using that whack-ass title. I know the general public is going to struggle because don't forget, if the movie title isn't extremely obvious, people are going to be like, what the fuck's that about? Like... Because if you compare it with movies like Bullet Train, babe, it's about a bullet train, a bullet sleigh. Let's talk about that. That was a great movie. I enjoyed that. Um, it had one of my favorite actors in it, Aaron Taylor Johnson. And he was like giving mobster energy with the slick back hair and like the piercings and the glasses and the tattoos. Like, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. And then Joey King with the Bob. I have a funny story about this movie. So my mom was like, I want to see that new Joey King movie. And I was like, what? And she's like, yeah, that new, that movie with Joey King in it and some other people. And I'm thinking, do you mean the movie with Brad Pitt, Sandra Bullock, Bad Bunny, Aaron Taylor Johnson, a bunch of other famous people and Joey King? And she's like, yeah. So, breaking news, my mum is a Joey King stan. She will ride or die for Joey King. So, that's fun. Um, Joey King and Bob's. Do I need to say anything about that? No. I think my absence of saying anything is saying enough. If you know what I mean. I will say there are many other options. For weeks for Joey King. Um, I will say, however, the looks that she's been wearing to the premieres, yeah, people died. They were very good looks. Shout out to her stylist. She was slaying, like she was. Like the slicked back look and then she had like a couple of like real cyberpunk looking like outfits and then some really cool cutout moments and yeah, she was really doing it. She was doing the damn thing, you know what I mean? Um, but Bullet Train... I enjoyed that it took place on a train. As we know, I enjoy a train. Hashtag Lizzie line. What is that noise? That is the third time that I've heard that noise. It's like a very like high-pitched vibration coming from upstairs. It's a little bit suspicious. Like, what are you doing that's causing my ceiling to vibrate? I'm not rocking with it. I'm not. And I don't appreciate it. So fix that. Speaking of my apartment building, I think one of my neighbours is subletting because I think I heard an Airbnb key handover today. Not that I was eavesdropping, but I mean, if I'm in the vicinity and you're talking loud, I'm going to hear it. Sorry. And I'm just like, are you allowed to do that? Are you allowed to rent out an apartment you're renting? Maybe she didn't rent. She would bought it. <gasps> Whoa. But if she bought it, that would also be crazy because I know that was an expensive apartment. Anyway... Um, I don't even know how I got to talking about that. Bullet sleigh. Yeah, um, I enjoyed the slow-mo scenes. I'm a sucker for slow-mo and trains. Bitch, I love trains. I love trains. And I love samurai. And I love slow-mo. And I love just like mysteries and thrillers. And ugh, yeah, it was good. Would I change some things? Yeah, yeah, I would. Yeah. Thing is with me, I think that anything that has enough money put into it is good. 
like when people talk about, oh, I saw this movie, but it wasn't good. I'm like, but did you enjoy watching it? I don't know how to get this point across. Like if I, if someone tells me a movie's bad and I go and watch the movie, I don't think it's bad. I think anything that has lots of effort behind it is good because how could it be bad? Do you know what I mean? Like when people are like, oh, Twilight New Moon's terrible. Yeah, it could improve in some areas, but then it's still a fun movie to watch. Maybe I just don't have the cognition to be a critical thinker. I just like things that people make. So like same with music when people are like, oh my God, this song sucks. I'm like, well, somebody's enjoying it. But there are some exceptions to the rule. Dash, dash, space, dash, 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 dash. Yeah, he's my enemy. Yeah, he is. He is my enemy. Um, but yeah, my hater writers has flared up recently. And I think it's because I'm waiting for summer. Like, you know, in High School Musical when they're like, summer, 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 summer. That's me. But the thing with Melbourne is that she is not doing that anytime soon. Do you know what I mean? Like, I feel like I've been in winter since May. May, June, July, August, September. It's month five of winter. Like, let's be serious. Where's the sunshine? It was, how much today? 18 degrees. And I was like, let's go to the beach each. Like, I really wanted to go to the beach because it's the hottest day that it's been in fucking months. And my sister was like, no, don't go to the beach. Like, that, you're going to get cold. And she was so real and so right for that because it was a bit chilly. Like, the wind really got me. Fuck the wind. Me and my homies hate the wind. If you like the wind, get fucked. It's not funny, is it, though? Like, wind is crazy. Not enough people are talking about the wind. Can we talk about the wind for a second? Let's talk about the wind. What the fuck is wind? Nah, what's wind? Hang on, I'm going to Google that. I feel like I know what wind is, but I am also willing to learn more. But also, if the answer that Google gives me is not immediately interesting or like worth the Google, then I'm going to be mad. And that's fair. What is wind? Here we go. Perceptible natural movement of the air, especially in the form of a current of air blowing from a particular direction. Uh, Okay. Where does wind come from? While this is searching... Um, I had some ideas for tattoos. I'm the type of person to be like, yes, I want a tattoo. And then when it comes to actually doing it, I'll be like, no, I'm not doing it. But I found some really fun ideas, but I don't want to tell anyone because I don't want anyone to take it. <laughs> because my hateritis will flare up. If I see, like, this, no, no bitch has this tattoo that I'm thinking of. And if I tell you all and someone gets it and I see it, oh, it'll be bad. Let's just say that. Here we go. Where does wind come from? The sun's energy heats the planet's surface, which most intensely... Okay, I just added which in there for no reason. The sun's energy heats the planet's surface most intensely at the equator, which causes air to rise. The rising air creates an area of low pressure at the surface into which the coolest air is sucked. I don't know why I put so much emphasis on that. And it is this flow of air that we know as wind. So wind is the rising air, which creates an area of low pressure at the surface, which sucks in the cool. (gasps) That's crazy, but also makes a lot of sense. Oh, so it's like a pressure vacuum. Area of low pressure at the surface into which cool air is sucked. That is so interesting. Shout out to nature. Really popped off with that one. Um, And speaking of my hateritis... I had to go to Officeworks, which if you're not from Australia or potentially New Zealand, I feel like they have Officeworks in New Zealand. Um, It's like a stationary store. So I think maybe like Staples or something like that you would have the equivalent of in the States. And then in the UK, 
what is the stationary place? It's not Boots. It's not Boots. Boots is like pharmacy, right? What would it be? Is it a Tesco? No, that's like food shopping, right? I don't know. Feel free to let me know. Um, and I don't have a car, famously. Haven't had a car for four years. Famously sold the car to pay the bond on my apartment in Melbourne. Slay! <laughs> um, yeah, I don't have a car. I do have a bike, though. And this office works is in a weird area for public transport. So that was off the cards and it was a little bit far to walk. I'm not opposed to walking. I've been known to walk. But it's like also like walking along a highway. There's something so humbling about walking along a highway. Do you know what I mean? I feel like I'm at my lowest when I'm walking along a highway. Anyway, so then my last remaining options were to scoot on the rental scooter, which I suddenly got the ick for that the other day because I scooted to the gym and I was like, what if someone sees me? Because I need to think about these things now. Like people recognize me and that's not like, oh my God, you guys, people recognize me. That's like people recognize me. So my do anything itis is suffering because what if someone saw me on a scooter? <laughs> that's kind of that's bad for my image. It's bad for my image. Like what? Anyway, I think it's because my outfit was insanely bad. Like it was so bad. I need to fix that actually. I either need to fix my gym outfit or I need to get a car because me being on public transport and people talking to me on the tram and seeing me at my lowest, (laughs) he was at his lowest. (laughs) YouTube checks weren't checking. Demonetization at an all-time high. (laughs) He was going to that gym mad as hell. Thinking about the time that I like posted that meme about Christina Aguilera being mad as hell and their words, not mine. The tweeter said she was at her lowest fat, nasty and broke. She went into that studio mad as hell and it was about how she did moves like Jagger. And I put that tweet, screenshot of that tweet and put it on my Instagram story and it got reported for bullying. I maintain to this day that is the reason why I can't get verified. We actually had a verification attempt this week, ladies. Do you think it went well? Do you guys think I got verified? No. No, I did not get verified, which is so shocking. Like, that's so shocking. Just kidding. The little haters at Instagram or meta, (laughs) the meta girls hate me. And it's because of two reasons. First one is that I refuse to post a reel. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. If I have to post a reel to get verified, I'm not doing it. I guess I'll stay unverified forever. And number two, the Christina Aguilera thing. So I think that's the reasons why. Yeah, that was so much fun. That was so much fun getting that decline verification attempt because I actually had um, a few, you know, features like, there was a couple of articles that I was in, which was Slay. There was one from The Guardian. Shout out Matilda. Matilda really slayed that number. It was about like long form content on YouTube. And then YouTube itself interviewed me for the Google blog. So I was like, surely I can get verified with these. Because I ask you to send in links and other verified platforms. So I sent in my YouTube channel and my TikTok account. And then I sent like four or five articles and Instagram's like, no, no, sorry, no. So I feel like the only way for me to get verified is if I get a like manager to do it for me. Um, And the management conversation, that's like, that's for another time. Like that's not really a thing for now. You know what I mean? Like, um, so I had to ride to Officeworks And my riding era famously started last year and 
I was riding around in summer. Yeah, I was riding to the beach to read my finance book. Is the book finished? No, because I don't read it unless I'm on the beach and I haven't been to the beach since like February. So there's that. And I get to Officeworks and I need to buy a labeler. Why are you buying a labeler? Why are you buying a labeler for the merch? Yeah, yeah. So I, I bought this like Dymo 5XL thing and the like printing paper, the stickers to put on the mailing bags. And the stickers cost more than the actual printer. Be real. Dymo, what the fuck? Be serious. Like, excuse me? That's ridiculous. Um, And also when I was reading reviews on this Dymo 5XL, it got review bombed and I was like, why are the girls mad? Why are the haters hating? And it's because you can't use non-Dymo, like, printing ticket paper thing on it. So you have to use the Dymo ones and then they mark up the price like crazy. Uh, anyway, so I found the stuff that I needed and then this printer was in a big fucking box and I was like, that shit is not fitting in my backpack. So I put the rolls of printing blah, blah in the backpack and then we had to take the printer out of the box. So the box is at Officeworks. The box did not make it home because I couldn't carry it. It wouldn't fit in a bag. I was like, do you have any bags? And they're like, no, we just have this small one. How in this big store that sells big things, you don't have more than one bag? Anyway, um, the girl who served me was a queen. She was like, wait, what if we take it out of the box and then you can put that into the bag and then you can hold it on the side of the bike. And I was like, you're such a forward thinker. Like you're a forward thinker. Um, and she was a subscriber. Yeah. Yeah. And I knew that she would get it. Like, And she got it because she gets it. Do you get it? You got it. So I bought the stuff and I couldn't really ride back because this thing was like weighing down my right arm and I had the backpack on and I was having issues trying to swing my big fat ass over the bike. Like the weight distribution was weird because there was like uneven weight on the handlebars. Yeah, I'm an engineer. Yeah. Yeah, weight distribution. Yeah. Um, so I was using the bike as like a scooter. When you So imagine I'm holding the bike alongside the right side of my body and I'm walking it next to me and then I put my right foot on the left pedal and I'm like scooting with my left foot. So at the end of the day, I was scooting along the highway on my bike, holding a bunch of shit in gale force winds, in gale weathers forced winds. It was it was bad PR. It was bad PR. Lucky I don't live in LA, and lucky I don't have like seven trillion subscribers because I've lived in. If I lived in LA and I had like ten million subscribers and I was seen doing that, I feel like it'd be over for me. Do you know what I mean? Wow, what a concept. Um, also, when I like went to get my bike, those tires have never been flatter. When I saw the tires, I was like, who hurt you? Because those tires, like somebody was plotting against them. I fear someone may have spiked my tires. I don't know. You can't trust anyone as we know. Yeah. Yeah. Um... What's another example of my hateritis flaring up? Anytime I see someone announcing a relationship milestone, I'm like, I don't care this is happening to you, should happen to me instead. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's me with houses. Like when I see that someone's bought a house, my immediate two lines of thinking are, should have been me. <laughs> and second thing is, how did you afford that? And I know that's toxic. Like, Someone else's success is not my detriment. That is not the quote, but you know what I'm saying. But I can't knock it. It's my internal hater. I maintain that my internal hater has kept me alive and successful to this point. I don't think I would have got to this point in my careers, engineering and YouTube, without being a little bit of a hater. Because being a hater keeps you grounded. And I stand by that. Do you know what I mean? So 
I have been known to, if someone, if I perchance accidentally open the Facebook app and I see that someone's bought a house and they've decided to plaster that all over the internet, babe, I'm going to look it up and I'm going to look up the media house price in the area. I'm going to look at the price guide. You went to auction? So did I. (laughs) So did I, babe. Let me check the area, see what happened at that auction. Um, I'm looking at the pricing history of this place. I'm guessing how much it was. Then I'm like, hmm, that deposit, hmm, that deposit must have been crazy. Um, But I'm working on that. I'm working on not getting other people's business. It's not going well since people just put everything everywhere. With the relationship stuff on Facebook, I guess... Where else are you going to put it? Do you know what I mean? I guess people put it on Instagram. Put it on LinkedIn. Oh, my God. The best social network, LinkedIn. We love, we love, we love LinkedIn. Bitch, fuck LinkedIn. God. Uh-uh. <laughs> uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. I haven't opened link, lim- hello? LinkedIn. I haven't opened LinkedIn in Bitch, I don't even know how long. I'm anti-LinkedIn. Put that on the record. I remember when I had issues working out what LinkedIn, how to pronounce it, how to pronounce it, because there was also that tool that was called Log Me In. It was like a remote desktop. Oh, this is so embarrassing. In uni, I thought it was Logmelon because it was like L-O-G-M-E, like capital L-O-G, Capital M E, uppercase I N, but the I looked like an L, which I would never fucking get over that. Fuck the English language. Why did the capital I look like the lowercase L? That doesn't even make sense. What the fuck is that about? It's embarrassing. That's what it is. So, log melon. And then imagine my surprise when I hear about LinkedIn. Link, LinkedIn. LinkedIn. That's when I realized that log me in was log me in and not log melon. Because I was like, why would it be link, LinkedIn? Like that doesn't even make sense. But apparently according to me, log melon made sense. Don't talk to me about that, please. Let's drop that. Um, I think LinkedIn... I, I remember doing a ranking of worst social media apps a while ago on this podcast. Let me just do one off the dome. Does that sound like fun? Yes. Let's say from best to worst, let's go TikTok. TikTok's fun. I mean, there's a lot of feral, felonious flops on TikTok. So many. So, 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 so many. And my hateritis has never been worse than when, since I've been on TikTok. We'll talk about TikTok in a second. Um, And then I would say YouTube. And then I would say Twitter. Also hateritis flares up on Twitter. But because I'm in my say anything, do anything era, Twitter's so much fun. It's so much fun. That's where you get all the funny shit. And then it appears on Instagram four months later. That's like how my TikTok audio, I think I talked about this last episode, my one that's like, would you rather like that audio from TikTok that's going viral on Instagram now with like a video of a sassy monkey? I'm like, what? (laughs) What? Why was my voice on Jennifer Garner's Instagram story? What? Anyway. Um, so after Twitter, I would have Instagram and then Pinterest. I need to get around Pinterest. It just scares me because like anytime I remember having the Pinterest extension on Google Chrome and then anytime every single fucking image would be like, pin it. I'm like, leave me alone. Like I don't want to pin it. So I need to see if they fix that or if I can maybe just not download the extension. You dummy. Um, So maybe Pinterest would go up before Instagram, but after Twitter. Instagram, yeah, I like to look at pretty pictures, but the girls are putting their pretty pictures, like their cool designs and that kind of shit, like on TikTok. 
Like when I say pretty pictures, I mean like sleigh interiors, cool fashions, like that kind of stuff. And like people's art. And now because people know that if you want to grow on the internet, you need to post on TikTok, they're posting all their stuff on TikTok, either as like stills in like a video or how they made the stuff, which is more interesting anyway. So Instagram, you flopped in that round. When have they not flopped? Fuck Instagram. No, I'm not bitter because of recent events. Shh. Keep to yourself, please. Um, And then LinkedIn, as we know, people just say fucking anything on LinkedIn. Anything. LinkedIn was a mistake. We have to go back (laughs) pre-LinkedIn. LinkedIn is like, I was going to say it's like boomer Facebook, but Facebook is boomer Facebook. LinkedIn is toxic career Facebook. Is the climb, like the social climb. Oh, I kind of hit that climb though. Is the climb. Oh, that was not good. Just will you remember me? <laughs> will you remember? No. Say you remember me. Na, 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 na. Standing in a sundress. I'm losing the joke. Stay with me. Stay with me, everyone. Will you remember? Say you remember. <laughs> Fuck. No. Remember me at my first the climb, not my second the climb. We got there. <laughs> Hang on. Say you remember me. No. No. Um, that just reminds me of how... I can do a perfect Squidward's Tiki Land voice. When they're like, hey guys. <laughs> hey fellas, it's Squidward. Fact check that. Go look up Squidward's Tiki Land. Hey fellas, it's Squidward. Yeah, they sound exactly like that. Welcome to Squidward's Tiki Land. I have to say this before I forget. Music by Madonna has been stuck in my head and I want to say it was number one for four weeks but maybe it was three but she slayed that one because I was doing a playlist of songs by pop girls or like off-center pop girls I'll explain that in a second that uh didn't go number one but went number one in my charts so for example actually I'll just pull up the slay list I've got it here somewhere um Okay, so do it well, Jennifer Lopez. Cuz I can pink. Ooh, that went number 1 on my charts for months. That went number 1 in my mum's car. <laughs> on the Mike's Mike Mum charts, that went number 1. God is a DJ. God is a DJ. One thing about Pink is that she's going to swing from the rafters. Like she's going to put on that like trapeze and go for a swing. I remember. (laughs) Sorry. I remember like every Australian mum saw Pink in concert. It felt like Pink was touring Australia nonstop for 10 years. Like she did not leave these shores because she knew she would have a sold out show. (laughs) Sorry, that is so funny to me. But um, yeah, my mum saw her. People were organising trips to like go up to the city to watch the pink show. And then after the pink show, all the mums would be like, she was amazing. Yeah, yeah, she was amazing. I actually like have flashbacks to being at my friend's house after school. And there was like a few of us there. And another kid's mum came to pick up her son and the mums were talking and they were talking about how they went to see Pink. <laughs> she was fantastic. Yeah, she really knows how to put on a show, doesn't she just? Yeah. God, she really was swanging from them ceilings. They really had to... Like, how do you follow that up? Like, I know Katy Perry was screaming and crying after seeing how Pink performed on the Australian show. She was like, damn, how am I supposed to one-up that? <laughs> Um, 
keeps getting better. Christina Aguilera keeps getting better. That went number one on my charts recently. I fucking love that song. Little sample for the girls. Three Pumps, The Mother Mist on that one. Let's Get Loud, Jennifer Lopez, Bubble Pop Electric by Gwen Stefani, Can't Fight the Moonlight, Leanne Rhymes. I thought that went number one, apparently not. Stupid Girls by Pink. Oh. She went off with that. And I know she put a statement out being like, I'm sorry to women. Sorry, everyone. Because she was being a toxic little hater in that song. But the song is so good. Like, I feel like you can appreciate the song without being like, oh my God, I'm going to live my life according to Pink's song, Stupid Girls. <laughs> like, you can think it's a good song. Um, but then in that playlist, I also had music by Madonna. But then that song did go number one. So I guess I have to take it out of the playlist, but I don't want to do that. I don't want to. Um, I'm going to have to do the backtrack of a century to work out how I got to talking about that. Facebook. Oh yeah, I was doing the apps ranking. I'm getting so good at backtracking my thoughts because when, oh, I was going to say something very, very dumb. I'm going to say it anyway. I lost my sense of smell and my taste. So my other senses are heightened. Bitch, memory is not a sense. God. Anyway, um, also, I feel like my smell is starting to come back because the city was smelling fucking feral, like so bad, and I felt like I could smell it. Like I, I don't, ugh, I don't know if I was making it up in my brain because I felt this hot wind come past me from somewhere. It was a cold day, top of thirteen, and this hot wind went past me, and I swear I smelled it. And I was like, oh, that's fucking man said. But maybe it was my brain being like, why is there a hot wind? Like that, there's no way in which that hot wind is smelling nice. And then she put the, the chemicals in my brain to make me smell that. It's possible. Like it's possible. Um, but then there's times where like I'm in situations where I know I should be smelling stuff, but I'm not. Like the gym change room, I know that shit stinks, <laughs> but I can't smell it. So what's that about? And then like there's this one bin that I live near and when I walk past that bin back in the day when I could smell, like it was world changing. It was like a sensory overload. Like I don't even know how it was possible, the stench that came from that bin. But I walked past the bin on purpose the other day and I couldn't smell anything. And I got my favourite banana custard donut from Walker's Donuts and couldn't taste it. But I feel like I could smell it a tiny bit, like that kind of plasticky banana smell. I feel like it was there. She was there. Like, I swear she was there. She was. Um, but, yeah, so moral of the story is fuck Facebook, fuck LinkedIn, fuck Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, and YouTube can stay. Are there any other ones that we need to talk about? Snapchat, like I talk to the same three people. Like the same three or four people, that's it. Like I'm not doing shit on Snapchat. And the Snapchats that I send to people are mainly just me being like giving inconsequential updates about nothing. Being like going for a walk, taking the rubbish out. Like no one gives a shit. But then they do the same, so it's fun. It's solidarity, you know what I mean? Um, oh, don't even... Oh, I actually threw up in my mouth. Dating apps. No, don't, don't, don't. Don't. So bad, so bad, so bad. Oh, my God, so bad. Like, oh. Also, I, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but I got, like accepted onto this app called Raya, which is like influencer dating or like the, I don't know. What do they even pitch it as? Hold on. Let me open in the app store. 
It's some like real fucky shit. Hang on. Raya. Can you give me the about? What is this? Here we go. Our focus at Raya is to provide members with access to exciting people and opportunities around the world. We are a private community where people come to connect for dating, networking, and friendship. Uh, okay. <laughs> no. First of all, you have to pay to use it. How much is it? Like, I want to say it's 15 to $20 a month, which is obscene, first of all. I wanted to get it because I wanted to see who else was on there because I'm nosy like that. Um, I have not gained anything from that app. Not in the networking aspect, not in the dating aspect, not in the being nosy aspect. I've seen a couple of famous people on there and I screenshotted one once and it gave me a warning. And I was like, if you screenshot again, you'll be kicked off the app and you'll also be reported. And I was like, oh my God, calm down. Is it that serious? But Raya gives me very LinkedIn vibes. Like it's very humble braggy and I'm just not good at that. I'm like, be real. Wait, I need to put be real in there. Be real, I would say after Twitter, before Instagram, it's a cute little fun app, but like it's not really doing much. They need to add something. They need to do something more. I guess their whole thing is like, we just want you to take a cute little photo once a day, front and back camera. But I feel like that's going to get stale. So they need to do something. It's basically just like a snap streak. Is that a hot take? It is kind of just like a snap streak. Um, but yeah, Raya is diabolical because it shows you like all these people that have been accepted in air quotes to this private community or whatever. And there are some like famous people on there, like some influencers and there's like restaurant owners, business owners. And then it's just, it's not good for me mentally. Like it's not good for me because these people, some of them are like literal models. Like there are so many models on Raya, right? And you're like looking at the pictures and you're like, bitch, that ain't me. <laughs> like I don't look like these people. These people are Gorginka. Like they're Gor Gorgonzola. Like I don't know. Like it makes me feel better about myself because it's like that's not me. You know what I mean? Also like everyone on the app is in America, so, fuck dating apps. That's my final message on that matter. Um, the last, I never talk about dating ever anywhere, <laughs> but I will say this. The last date that I went on with someone from a dating app, they told me they had a skeleton in the attic like a real skeleton. Yes, you heard correctly. My date told me that there was a real skeleton in their family's attic. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah. I don't know if you're joking or not. I'm going to assume you're joking because why the fuck would you have a skeleton, a real human skeleton in your attic? So, yeah, that was fun. Um, I said I was going to talk about TikTok. Look at me remembering stuff. It's because it's that sense of memory. Like, as I said, like my smell went and my sense of memory came back so strong. Um, on TikTok, there's this new phenomenon of people like uploading clips from my YouTube videos. And it's an interesting one because sometimes they'll upload like little clips, like, I don't know, like a 15 to 30 second bit from one of my YouTube videos being like, this was funny. And that's fine. I love that. That slays because it's like, I like seeing what people think about my content. Like, and when people say nice things, I'm like, oh, thank you. And I like seeing other people talk about it because it's like, they might pick up something about the content that I didn't pick up on when I made it. So for example, someone uploaded something about my Hunger Games 
Catching Fire and then people talking about Catching Fire in the comments. And I was reading it and I was like, he, 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 so true. I can't believe I didn't say that. Blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Um, and then like other times people will make like little edits or like they'll compile some bits of my content into like a little video. That's fine as well. Love those. Sometimes I'm like watching them I'm like, wait, I am a little bit funny. Like that was funny when I said that. <laughs> um, so I love those. But now because a few of those clips have gone viral, like two to five million views, some people have started just uploading the entire YouTube video to TikTok. Like a full, like in the early days, three to five minute video. But TikTok lets you upload up to 10 minutes. So there are some like long ones as well. And I'm like, hold on. Hold on, you guys. What's going on? Hold the girl. (laughs) Hold the girl, you guys. What's going on here? Let's stay playful together. Like, let's not do that. Do you know what I mean? Like, but it's a weird one because it's like, I don't want to message them being like, hey, can you not upload my entire YouTube video to TikTok? But at the same time, I'm like, I don't know what to do about that. So the moral of the story is, I don't know what to do about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there was something else that was causing my hateritis to flare up. Oh. <laughs> something that happened today and it happens a lot. I don't know what people are doing. I think they're doing it on purpose where they'll be like, you look like this person. Like they'll send me a DM being like, you look like this person. And then I click on the picture and it's like, it shocks me. It shocks me. And I'm like, oh, okay. Is that what I look like? Oh my God. No, stop. Whoa, I don't even know how, I, how did I do that? I pressed a meme on my meme board that's called Mr. Incredible Becoming Uncanny. Okay, sure. I feel like, wait, this could be a very brainy statement or it could be full of shit. I think the guy who did the soundtrack for The Incredibles also did the soundtrack for Lost. And I think he won an Emmy for Lost and he won, would it be an Oscar or a Grammy? A Grammy, I think, for The Incredibles. Michael Giacchino. Should we fact check or let's just go along with it? Let's just go along with it. Yes, fact check. Um, Hold oh, the girl. I got some bad news today. Oh, that's what sent me into the spiral. They're discontinuing Lyft. I know some of you might not know what Lyft is, but I think Lyft might be an Australian drink by the Coca-Cola company. Um, it's like a lemony drink. I had an argument with the girls the other day because we weren't sure how to categorize lemon drinks because I was saying that Lyft and Solo, I can't even remember. I was saying something, as you know, I say anything in my do anything, say anything era. And I was saying, that's right. I was asking them to rank lemon drinks. Cause that's what we do. Like we just message each other like, Hey, what are your top three pink songs? Hey, what's your top three lemon drinks, fizzy lemon drinks. And I was saying that solo and lift were like up the top. And then I think there was some drama because the girls weren't sure if lemonade and like lemon drinks were the same thing. But I was saying they should be ranked together. But then Vanessa, my friend, was saying that lemonade and like, I think she said Sprite. Lemonade, Sprite. And what's another one? Another clear lemon drink. Some lemon pop, lemon soda. That's like different to solo Sprite. Not bitch, I just said Sprite. Solo, lemon squash, and the cloudy looking ones. And I guess it's kind of true because they have a different kind of 
texture to them. One thing about me, in the last 45 days, I'm going to pick up texture in a drink. You might think there's no texture in a drink. Oh, try having no taste. I'm getting texture because I have to. Um, so yeah, there was drama about that. But I love Lyft. It just has that like tear your eyes out quality. Let me explain. I know some of you just did this. I know I mentioned this like maybe 40 episodes ago in the podcast about how when I was younger and I would have the bubble gum, like the roll of the bubble gum, it was just like so good that it, I felt like I wanted to rip my eyeballs out. Does that make sense? Like, I don't know how to explain it. Like, I chewed the bubble gum and be like, whoa, this is so sensory overload. I want to rip my eyeballs out. Anyway, that's the same thing with like lift. Light on the fizz so you can slam it down fast, which I feel like might be the slogan for solo. Light on the fizz so you can slam it down fast. Let me check that actually. That's important. Um... Light on the fizz. So you... Okay, here we go. Solo. Okay, it's solo. There you go. That's fun. Um, yeah, so they're discontinuing Lyft and they're introducing a Sprite Plus flavor. But that's like saying Coke No Sugar and Coke Zero are the same. Like, they're just not. So... I've been dealing with that, actually. It's been quite tough. That caused the hateritis flare-up. Um, and then someone bought a house. I opened Facebook and I saw two engagements in a row. And then um, also Tom's house got broken into. And then also I wanted to go bowling, but no one wanted to go bowling. Like I posted on my close friend's Instagram story being like, hey, guys. I really want to go bowling because as we know, I hyper fixate on things. How could you make a like six hour recap of Pretty Little Liars if you don't hyper fixate? One thing about me, I'm going to hyper fixate. So at the moment, I'm hyper fixating on Lost and Gossip Girl and bowling. Um, so I just want to go bowling all the time. And I have been going bowling but the last bowl that I had was like a week ago. So then I was on the close friend story being like, hey, does anyone want to go bowling? Hey, guys, I want to go bowling. Hey, everyone, I want to go bowling. Crickets. I did ask on a Wednesday morning. And I guess most of my friends my age work full-time jobs, which means they're not available during the week on weekdays. But... That seems like a them problem, not a me problem. Just take some leave. You know what I mean? Do you not want to go bowling? Um, so I don't know how I'm going to resolve that because I feel like I can't go bowling by myself. Bowl the girl. Because I, I can go to the movies by myself. I can do heaps of like fun activities by myself, but I feel like bowling is not one of them. I don't know. I don't know if I'm at that stage where I can just go to the lanes and throw down. I would be fine if there was no one else there, but if there's like a group of teenagers bowling on the lanes next to me, that's disastrous and stressful. Are you kidding? They're going to roast me. They're going to be like, why are you bowling by yourself? That's embarrassing. That's weird. You little weirdo. Wait, is that the guy from YouTube who scooted to the bowling alley? Now he's bowling by himself. Imagine the PR. My PR team would be in tears, crying in the office when that, came out on TMZ. We'd have to call Leslie to man manage the press on all this um, when we get back to New York. Actually, I'm going to end with a story from the lanes. I can't remember if I told this last week. I don't think I did. I think this happened after I recorded the podcast. So I don't think I've told the story, but if I have, apologies. So I went to the lanes last week. And I was bowling under the name Yas. And I had two friends with me. One was bowling under Slay and one was bowling under Work. No, I was Work. I was Work with an E. And then Slay and Yas were on my thing as well. Yeah, I won. 
I won. I got the highest score overall because I'm that girl. Anyway, so we're bowling and then this couple turns up next to us and they're looking like they're on a date, but I'm not sure. You know what I mean? I don't want to assume because as my year 10 English teacher said, to assume is to make an ass out of you and me. He was so real for that. Um, so they arrive and this girl has acrylics on, okay? She has acrylics on and she is throwing down. Like she is strike, strike, spare, eight, nine. Strike, strike. With acrylics on. Like I don't want to undersell the fact that she had undersell the fact that she had acrylics on. Like she's putting the hands in the ball and getting a strike with acrylics on. Are you actually kidding me? It was wild. Anyway, so she was doing that and then he was giving like toxic boyfriend, like also getting strikes, but it just wasn't slaying. Do you know what I mean? Like imagine being in the lane over and there's two people and there's a guy who's getting strikes and after every strike he's like, yeah, yeah, footy, 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 lads, lads, lads. And then the girl has acrylics on and then she will just get a strike and then she'll like walk back just slaying. Like, who are you going to go for? Do you know what I mean? Like, you're going to go for the girl. Hold the girl, famously. And she went up to bowl and she got a strike. And I was on the other lane with one of my friends and we were like, oh my God, that was so good. And we were like, hyping her up a little bit and when she was bowling right I looked over and this man had received a snapchat from a girl who was like holding it up and she was like squishing her boobs together from that like high up angle like it was I would say a sexual snap like she had clothes on and everything but like who why would you send that Do you know what I mean? Like the intention behind that, obviously. So he got that snap and he screenshotted it. And then Sister Slay got the strike. So then she's coming back and we're like hyping her up and he's like on his phone screenshotting pictures from girls. And she's like, they're hyping me up. Why aren't you? Like you're not even watching. What are you even doing? And I felt like saying, girl, run. Yeah, that was crazy. And then I was like, maybe they're not dating. Maybe they're just like friends and that's not weird. Like it is kind of weird, but not as weird as it could have been. Um, But then I said something like, oh, that was really good to her. And he was like, oh, yeah, thought we'd, I thought I'd take her out for like something fun like bowling. Turns out she's a bowling extraordinaire. And I'm like, okay. Sure. So it's a date then. And he was screenshotting pictures from other girls when Sister Slay was getting strikes with acrylics on. I really wanted to say something, but then my instincts kicked in, my street smarts kicked in and was giving very much punch. Do you know what I mean? Like, he, he didn't seem like the type of person to be like, yeah, you're so right, guy in this other lane playing under the name work with an E. You're so right. That was so bad of me. Like, I don't see how that situation would have ended well of me being like, hey, girl, your boyfriend is screenshotting pictures from other girls on Snapchat. But I don't know. I made a TikTok about it, so maybe she saw that. <laughs> um, moral of the story? That's the moral of the story. I think that brings me to the end of this episode. Moral of the story, I guess, for the episode would be if you bought a house and you posted it and I saw it, I looked that shit up. You got engaged, you posted that on the internet, I'm going to zoom in on the ring because I'm nosy. And that's what you get for posting it. Sorry. Um... Thank you all for listening. Mentally prepare yourselves for Hold the Girl this Friday, September 16. 
We also have the Blackpink album and the NCT 127 album. What the fuck? That's going to be so wild. I bring the pain like this, that pink venom. This, that pink venom. This, that pink venom. Straight to your dome like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I bring the pain like, and I do. What's after like? I really need to end this episode. Prepare for those songs. I might do another episode this week regarding Hold the Slay and the Pink Venom, sorry, um, Born Pink album. Is that what it's called? Yeah, I think so. And the NCT 127 album, which is called Baddies. Hello? <laughs> That's iconic. Um, anyway, so keep an eye out for that. Thank you for listening. Feel free to drop me a review on Spotify or like wherever you do little reviews. Leave me a five stars. Yeah. Because who else just talks shit like I do? No one. Maybe that's for a good reason. Anyway, have a good week and I'll talk to you all soon. Peace out. Bye.